Thank you for joining the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Northwestern Division for today's Missouri River Basin Conference call. This call is our monthly update webinar to provide an update of current runoff conditions in the Missouri River Basin. These calls are only part of our efforts to communicate with Basin residents. We place all our news releases on our website at www.nwd.usace.army.mil and on social media at NWDUSACE. We encourage the public to use these resources as well as our web app to get the latest information from the Corps, the National Weather Service, and other partner agencies. These calls are provided as a courtesy to congressional representatives, tribal, state, and local government officials, including levy sponsors and emergency managers, as well as the media. I am Eileen Williamson, and I will be moderating today's call. These calls are recorded and placed on the Defense Video and Imagery Distribution System, and links are available at nwd.usace.army.mil slash mrwm under latest news. Your participation acknowledges your consent to be recorded. If you are not connected to the webinar, the slides are available at the bottom of today's press release. All lines have been placed on mute for this call. To unmute your line to ask a question, press star six. If you have had the webinar call your phone, it is possible that you have been double muted on the webinar and your phone. Please be aware that the forced mute function may still not work on all phones. So if I ask, please use your phone own mute function to avoid interrupting the call. Do not place the call on hold. The agenda for today's call is as follows. From NOAA, Mr. Doug Cluck. From National Weather Service, Missouri Basin River Forecast Center, Mr. Kevin Lau. From the Missouri River Water Management Division, Mr. John Remus and representatives of his staff. We also have representatives from the Kansas City District and Omaha District Readiness Branches. These updates will be followed by a question and answer session Calls for questions will not be part of the recording if none are asked. With that, I will turn it over to uh, Doug Cluck. You may need to unmute, Doug. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we got you. You think after 150 different uh, webinars and whatever zoom calls we'd have this i'd have this figured out but thank you all well, for inviting the, the dictionary this year is going to add uh just still on you. <laughs> thank you all for inviting us uh inviting noah to this uh, discussion um on doug clock obviously it tells it tells you who i am where i work and all that business uh, let's go ahead and get started on the weather and climate outlook uh, this is looking back the uh, last 90 days, so since more or less the beginning of November. we On the left, you see the departure from normal temperatures. Any place that's yellow, orange, or red is above nor has been above normal for those 90 days. And you see some pretty dark reds, which means, oh, 8 to 10 degrees or even more, above normal, above average, really, for those 90 days over a huge portion of our of the basin in the upper uh, upper plains, northern plains. That's significant for a number of reasons. Uh, one is that usually uh, it goes along with, and you look down the lower right corner, uh, some drier than normal conditions. Now, we don't get a lot of precipitation during this period, but what uh, precipitation we do get often is snow. Well, there's not, there really hasn't been a lot of snow across that area. And thus you see not only warmer than normal temperatures, but drier than normal conditions on the right hand side. Again, where you see uh, colors that are, oh, we'll say yellow to dark red, those are all, um, those are all below normal percentages in, in terms of uh, precipitation. So some pretty dry conditions across uh, the upper basin, really, uh, over the last 90 days. <clears throat> Let's go to the next slide. Uh, looking at the last 30 days, again, not a heavy, heavy precipitation time of the year. Nonetheless, um, starting with temperatures on the left, not surprisingly, we see those above normal temperatures again showing up uh, in those yellow, oranges, and reds uh, for the last 30 days since really the beginning of January. Uh, in the lower right, we see uh, 
colors that more or less indicate, indicate sort of drier conditions to the north and west in the upper basin, and quite a bit wetter conditions down towards uh, Nebraska, eastern Kansas, Missouri, and, uh, and Iowa, that portion of the lower basin. So um, really has been warmish and, uh, and a little bit wet on the south and dry to the north. And let's go to the next slide. Uh, looking at snowpack, and I think others will uh, address this as well, but uh, in the higher elevations of uh, Montana, Wyoming, and Colorado, we're really seeing a dearth of, uh, of snow and snowpack building up uh, through this time of year. Most of those percentages, well, almost all of these percentages, except for maybe one of them in there, um, is below, uh, b below the median or below the average. So uh, in that oval area is really where we're focused uh, uh, on for the upper Missouri. Uh, these, if you look to the lower right, you see a much smaller map, but uh, indications of slightly wetter conditions, mainly in Montana that have dried out a little bit, um, still relatively close to a little bit below normal uh, in, in Montana, quite a bit below normal in Mon uh, Wyoming and uh, Colorado. We still have plenty of time to accumulate. Uh, it just takes a couple major storms uh, we'll see how that goes, and we'll talk about um, some possibilities in the future. Next slide. Uh, this is the uh, Plains snowpack for the most part. So although you see a lot of gray out there, which indicates some kind of snow, uh, it doesn't really indicate much uh, in terms, if you melted it all, um, how much water that would be. So until you start seeing some of those bluer, darker colors, you really aren't talking about a lot of snow uh, for the most part. Eastern Nebraska, Western Iowa does have a, a, a fairly good snowpack, and that's pretty much the only place that's above normal. It, uh, the rest of the basin is below normal for the most part uh, uh, in the upper basin uh, in, in terms of snowpack and snow water equivalent. Uh, next slide. <clears throat> this is looking out the next seven days and what we could expect in terms of precipitation. Really not a lot to talk about uh, where you see those light greens are really not talking about much, much um, uh, in terms of precipitation as a whole. Maybe in some of the higher elevations in Montana and Wyoming, they'll be getting some, but uh, lower elevations, really not a lot to, to speak of there, uh, up to a quarter, maybe a half an inch in some of those darker greens. Uh, green areas. So uh, that's the next seven days. Uh, total total amount of precipitation over that period. Next slide. This is the outlook for what we call week two. So you had to go out to February 11th through the, February 17th. Uh, the image on the left is a probability of below normal temperatures. So what we're starting with today across most of the basin is what we're going to see. In fact, it's going to get a lot cooler uh, over the next couple of days, and looks like it's going to last through week two. Uh, so we'll just say say it this way: from now through the middle, at least the middle uh, part of February, um, we're, we're looking at below normal temperatures across the entire basin. Where those where those colors are the darkest, or most purple in this case is where the probabilities are highest, but that's also our confidence in some of the uh, um, uh, differences from normal will be the highest too uh, in terms of cold. So plenty of cold air. We haven't seen it. It's about time to get an Arctic blast or two. So it's not surprising that we're starting to see some of this, some cold air coming down finally from, uh, from the Arctic actually. In terms of precipitation during that period, not, um, Nothing, nothing really to write home about. Some indication of slightly above normal, or leaning towards above normal, uh, above normal precipitation during uh, that period for much of the basin, but it's not a strong indication, I guess we would say, uh, for week two. Next slide. Uh, for the month of February, for the re for the rest of the month of February, this is the outlook for. Uh, on temperature on the left, where you see the blue blue colors and where you see the 
higher values, there's more confidence that we're going to be below normal in terms of temperatures when you average out the whole month. <clears throat> That's not too much of a, a surprise based upon what we have coming in the next couple of weeks. Uh, that fits pretty well, <clears throat> sorry, with the forecast. Now, in terms of precipitation, uh, we are de definitely leaning towards wet wetness or above normal wetness uh, in, in Montana, especially Montana, northern Wyoming, maybe far western South Dakota. Uh, the whole basin has a slight uh, bent towards wetter than normal conditions during this, during this month. Again, February is not the wettest month of the year by any means. It's not the driest, but it's certainly not the wettest in most places. But um, we'll see if we can uh, add to any snowpack that we already have. Next slide. Um, this, is, uh, this is the seasonal outlook. So we're talking February, March, and April of this year. Um, in, uh, some indications of cooler than normal, certainly near normal or equal chances, I should say, uh, across the upper basin in terms of temperature, and then a slight leaning, if you average, again, you got to average February, March, and April all together uh, towards above normal temperatures for most of the lower basin um, all the way up to South Dakota <clears throat> and Wyoming and places south. In terms of uh, precipitation, you can see that the upper basin really is getting the, the, the most uh, confidence in terms of above normal uh, precipitation chances. Uh, it's not a strong indication, but it definitely shows that uh, uh, the, the forecasters believe, and this is a, this by the way, is a classic La Nina uh, map, if you will, signal where above normal precipitation finally takes uh, takes place in the upper basin and below normal temp or below normal uh, precipitation. Oh, we're looking at the lower right, by the way, below normal indication precipitation indications for the central plains, uh, in other words, the southern parts and western parts of the basin uh, could dry out or continue to dry out uh, for quite a bit uh, going into the spring. Uh, next slide. Please. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to add a map, and I, I sort of forgot about it to the, to the until the very end, and we didn't get it added. But I wanted to compare or show you all what it was like last year at this time uh, to this year at this time. And, it, and if I would have shown you that map, I wouldn't have had much to show you except a lot of white, where there was no or virtually no drought across the entire basin. And we know why that was. Uh, 2019 um, was extremely wet, record wet across much of the basin, and thus our soil moisture and everything else were plumb full, and we were pretty worried about having a return of some flooding, major flooding, uh, uh, last spring and, and certainly late, late winter. This year is obviously a different story. We have reds, which indicate uh, extreme drought across uh, fairly large portions of the west and southwest portions of the basin, and almost the entire basin has some form of drought indicated across, across it. Others will talk a little bit more about soil moisture in a minute. The outlook for uh, the outlook on the lower right for the region or for the nation really shows that brown area, which shows persistence. In other words, it's not going to improve much. It's not going to degrade. It could degrade, but uh, it, it's at least going to persist. The yellow areas indicate where drought may develop, and this is through the end of April, uh, and that goes along with the forecast of uh, that yellow area goes along with the forecast of uh, below, below normal chances of precipitation uh, through the spring, um, through mid-spring, I'd say. Okay, uh, and then, oh yeah, some relief for Montana is possible. All right, so key points here, uh, we're still in the line yet, it's still going, and uh, thus uh, the, the sort of wet, wet and cool to the north and dry and, and warmer to the south, uh, at least the probabilities are saying that. Snowpack, mostly below normal, except for uh, eastern Nebraska, western Iowa, and mountain snowpack, mainly below average. And then the outlook, short term, uh, I'll just say cold and slightly favors above normal precipitation during that uh, two-week period to a month. Longer term, like I just said, near normal uh, probabilities, uh, near, nor uh, near normal probabilities for temperatures to the north 
and uh, favors slightly favors above normal temperatures to the to the most of the southern part of the basin. Precipitation precipitation mainly enhanced north and west. Some dryness favored for the southern and central uh, part of the basin. And I think that's all I have. We'll do our next uh, climate summary on the 18th. Thank you. All right, thanks, Doug. We'll move to Kevin Lau. All righty, thank you, Eileen. And uh, good afternoon, thanks. everyone. I will uh, uh, reiterate uh, Doug's appreciation for having uh, NOAA on these series of calls. So um, snowpack conditions in the mountains can generally be categorized as below normal. By this point in the winter, we have usually accumulated about 60% of the seasonal peak snow water equivalent in the mountains. And so uh, we're still fairly early in the season and things could still change. The February water supply forecast developed by the National Weather Service was issued this past Tuesday. And our water supply forecast do suggest a below normal runoff season, which covers the period April through September. As Doug said, plain snow is widespread, but generally shallow. And the highest plains snow water equivalents exist in um, eastern Nebraska and southwest Iowa, uh, where the snow water equivalent, in other words, the amount of water that's in the snowpack ranges from one to as much as three inches. Soil moisture conditions, as Doug said, um, across the basin continue to be drier than normal. And the latest U.S. drought monitor that Doug just showed does list 91% of the Missouri Basin as being abnormally dry or worse. Despite the warmer than normal winter, the fact that many tributaries entered the winter in a lower than normal flow state and also lower than normal precipitation, the basin has still experienced uh, quite an active ice jam season. Though impacts have been limited, ice jams have been reported along the Wind River in Wyoming, the Jefferson and Lower Yellowstone Rivers in Montana, the Niobrara River in Nebraska, the lower reach of the North Platte in Nebraska. And uh, this past weekend, they had a uh, ice jam move through the lower reach of the Platte River in Nebraska. A couple of rainfall events in late January resulted in minor to moderate flooding along many of the smaller tributaries within the state of Missouri. And this just serves to remind us that flooding in the lower basin can and does occur throughout the year. Looking ahead, our office issued its most recent 90-day river outlook on January the 25th covering the three-month period of February, March, and April. And this outlook indicates that the only area in the Missouri River having a greater than 50-50 chance to see flooding is the eastern uh, portion of Kansas and the state of Missouri. And that's uh, depicted in that graphic you see in the upper right-hand corner. So all those colored dots there in Missouri and eastern uh, Kansas, those are locations that stand a a better than 50-50 chance of seeing flood during the next three months. And, and this is typical. Uh, risk for flooding between now and the end of April is dependent upon the timing and location of any plains snow melt or rain on snow events and rain events like we had uh, just a week ago um, across southern Missouri. Ice jam flooding will remain a possibility throughout the winter and as we near the end of this three-month period, which takes us through the end of April, uh, we have to be thinking about thunderstorm activity, which is the driver of springtime flooding in the lower third of the basin. The National Weather Service will be issuing its first spring flood outlook next Thursday, February the 11th, and that will provide the first official National Weather Service quantification of flood potential for this spring and early summer. Thank you, and this concludes the National Weather Service Flood Potential Brief. Thanks so much, Kevin. And uh, I'll move over to John Remus. Thank you, Eileen. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. 
John Remus, Chief of the Missouri River Basin Water Management Division. Our office is responsible for regulating the Missouri River Mainstream Reservoir System. I will provide some general uh, remarks here, and then I will turn the discussion over to my senior staff for more detailed information. I want to again ensure, <coughs> sure, excuse me, everyone in the basin that the Corps remains fully committed to our flood risk reduction mission, protecting stakeholders when we can from significant runoff events that pose a threat to human health and safety. Floods can and will occur regardless of basin or system conditions, including ice jam induced flooding during the winter freeze in and spring breakup periods and flooding due to thunderstorms, particularly in the lower river basin, which cannot be mitigated by the main stem reservoir system. Uh, very similar to what uh, Kevin Lau just discussed. Further, it is important to understand that the volume, timing, and location at which runoff enters the system significantly impacts the timing and amount of releases from our reservoirs. We are also committed to supporting the authorized purposes as outlined in the master manual. We will continue to meet our statutory obligations to operate the Missouri River Main Stem Reservoir System for its authorized purposes as described in the master manual, and we will also comply with all of the laws while also complying with the, or also implementing the 2018 biological opinion. I just a reminder that each runoff season or flooding event is unique. Care should be taken when comparing one event to another. As I mentioned on the February call, after two years of very high runoff, 2020 was somewhat of a transition year. 2020 began with above average runoff in the upper basin. However, as the year progressed, much of the basin entered into a drought, as was discussed earlier. This required a shift in our management focus from evacuation of flood water to meeting downstream flow targets. The reservoir system as it stands today is in very good shape from both a flood control and a flow support point of view. <clears throat> Kevin Grody and Mike Swinson will provide more details in a few minutes. On December 29th, we posted the 2020-2021 Annual Operating Plan, or AOP, to our website. I want to thank everyone that provided comments on the draft AOP. In January, we sent out hard copies of the annual operating plan to those individuals and organizations on our AOP mailing list. The 2020-2021 annual operating plan will be the last one that will be provided in hard copy format. All future AOPs will be available digitally through our web page. We posted our February 1st, 2021 Upper Basin Runoff Forecast earlier this week. Kevin Grody will provide more details on the runoff forecast. I want to remind everyone that the runoff forecast is based, <coughs> excuse me, runoff forecast is based on the best available information. It is important to understand that we are nearing the midpoint of the snowpack accumulation period, and the forecast can and will likely change. That concludes my remarks. Thank you very much. I will now turn the discussion over to Kevin Grody. Thank you, John. <coughs> Eileen, can you hear me? Yep, we got you. All right. So I am on slide 16. The 2021 calendar year runoff forecast for the Upper Missouri Basin above Sioux City, Iowa, as of February 1, is 22.9 million acre feet, or 89% of average. So I'm going to move to slide 17 now. January runoff was 1.1 million acre feet, about 140% of average. The above average January runoff was primarily due to above normal temperatures over much of the basin, melting accumulated plain snowpack. I should note that we are forecasting below average runoff during each month of the July or, excuse me, of the March through July period, which that five-month period is considered our high runoff portion of the year. The most important factors in determining our runoff forecast are current runoff trends, soil moisture, plains and mountain snowpack, and precipitation and temperature outlooks. So now I'm moving to slide 18. 
Now, Doug and Kevin have both touched on this in their early remarks, but it is important to note that the soil moisture conditions are very dry in the majority of the upper basin and particularly dry in the western portion of the upper basin. So now I'm going to move to slide 19. And again, Doug and Kevin have both touched on this. Uh, plain snowpack, which typically melts from mid-February into April, is currently very low to non-existent in the upper basin. The plain snow that does exist is concentrated in eastern South Dakota and eastern North Dakota, and of course, some here in Nebraska. And now slide 20. Mountain snowpack is accumulating at below average rates in both reaches. When I talk about both reaches, I'm talking about above Fort Peck Dam and between Fort Peck and Garrison Dam. As of February 2nd, the mountain snowpack in the Fort Peck reach was about 80% of average, while the mountain snowpack in the Fort Peck to Garrison reach was about 78% of average. By February 1st, we are about two-thirds into the snowpack accumulation period and mountain snowpack normally peaks around April 15th. So in summary, the 2021 calendar year runoff forecast as of February 1 is 22.9 million acre feet, 89% of average. I'll now turn it over to Mike so you can talk about the monthly reservoir studies. Okay, thanks. Can you hear me, Eileen? Yep, we got you. Okay. Uh, in terms of Gavin's Point releases, Gavin's Point releases averaged 17,000 CFS in January. Releases from Gavin's Point are expected to remain at that rate through February, but may be adjusted in response to ice formation on the Missouri River below Gavin's Point. Garrison releases were set at 16,000 CFS in December in anticipation of the river freezing in which ended up occurring near the end of January. After stages in the Bismarck area stabilized, releases were gradually increased and are currently at 20,000 CFS. Releases will reach 22,000 CFS next week, downstream conditions permitting. Uh, moving on to talk about the updated monthly reservoir simulations. The basic simulation uses the runoff forecast that Kevin just discussed. Due to the amount of variability in precipitation and other hydrologic factors that can occur over the next several months, we also develop an upper and lower runoff that are then used in the upper and lower basic simulations. These simulations provide a range of reservoir elevations and releases that may be expected under the different runoff scenarios. The discussion to follow will focus on the basic or most likely runoff forecast. Information on the other runoff simulations is posted on our web page. On December, excuse me, uh, yeah, uh, slide 22 there. On December 21st, the reservoir system storage reached 56.1 million acre feet, which is the base of the annual flood control zone. This means that all the stored 2020 flood water has been evacuated from the system. Currently, the system storage is at 55.8 million acre feet. On March 1st, which is typically near the start of the runoff season, the basic simulation shows system storage at 56.0 million acre feet, just slightly below the base of the annual flood control zone, and all 16.3 million acre feet of flood control capacity will be available. The next slide. Uh, in terms of the Reservoirs, Fort Peck and Garrison are currently 0 0.2 and 0 0.5 feet excuse me, above the base of their respective flood control pools, while Oahe is one foot below the base of the flood control pool. At the end of February, the basic simulation shows Fort Peck, Garrison, and Oahe will be just below the base of their flood control pools. Moving on to the next slide. The service level is used to determine releases from Gavin's Point Dam to support navigation and to help provide an eight to nine foot deep navigation channel downstream. 
The navigation service level at the start of the navigation season is typically based on the March 15th system storage. Under the basic simulation, we would provide full service flow support for the first part of the navigation season. Full service flow support is designed to provide a nine foot deep navigation channel. For the full service level on the basic simulation, Gavin's Point monthly average releases range from approximately 27,000 CFS to 33,000 CFS. The service level for the remainder of the navigation season and the navigation season length are based on the July 1st system storage. Under the basic forecast, flow support for navigation would be at full service after the July 1st storage check and a full eight month season would be provided. In terms of energy generation at the main stem dams, in 2020, uh, system generation was 10.1 billion kilowatt hours. The long-term average is 9.5 billion kilowatt hours. Our forecast for generation in 2021 under the basic simulation is 9.2 billion kilowatt hours. Uh, next slide. Slide 25 shows the Missouri River Basin weekly update, which is found on our website at the address shown on the top of the slide. This web page gives a general overview of the current conditions in the Missouri River Basin and is updated weekly, usually on Tuesday morning. That concludes my remarks. Uh, I'll turn it back to you, Eileen. All right, thanks. Uh, and Mike Doolin with Kansas City District, you want to pro provide an update on the levees? Yeah, hi, Eileen, I'd be happy to. You hear me? Yep. Okay. So uh, overall, we, we continue to make progress, uh, albeit in January, it was a little bit slower than what we had been seeing. Uh, you heard the National Weather Service talk about the lower basin uh, was a little wetter than the upper basin. So uh, about every time it dry out, you know, we'd see another uh, rain or snowstorm come through, and, and that slowed our contractors down a bit. Um, but that being said, uh, we do have that deep freeze, hard freeze headed our way, uh, which is going to provide some uh, dry weather with it. And so with that, you know, our contractors will be out, be able to get out there and get to moving again. So overall, looking at all the levy projects that we're doing in our district in Kansas City, we're about 65% of the way there. Uh, 30 of those projects are 100% complete. And then we also have several projects that are hanging out there in that 90 to 95% complete range. And a lot of those are waiting on the, the spring seeding window to open up. So uh, most of them have level of protection restored. Uh, contractors are just waiting on that spring seeding window uh, to open up so they can go out there, reestablish sod, and then you'll see that number of completed projects uh, really spike this spring as what we're anticipating. Um, but so overall, uh, looking pretty good going into the spring. I think we've got uh, right now there's six levee systems out there that don't have level of protection 100% restored. As we near March 1, uh, there could be four different levy systems uh, that don't have level of protection fully restored. Um, but once our contractors are able to get moving on those, particularly in uh, northwest Missouri, um, I think they should be able to wrap those up relatively quick, quickly going into uh, mid to late summer. So. so overall, I think we're looking pretty good this year and happy to take any questions uh, after that. Thank you. All right, thanks, Mike and uh, Matt Kratsky. Yeah, good afternoon. Thanks, Eileen. Uh, this is Matt Kratsky, Chief of the Readiness Branch in the Omaha District. Um, so we've uh, been pretty lucky, the pretty mild winter, so it's been conducive to continuing our uh, construction activities. And with respect to the 2019 rehabs, um, in particular on the uh, tributary rehabs, um, we've about got those wrapped up, with the exceptions being uh, Waterloo on the Elkhorn River. Uh, we're just getting that one underway here. Um, we got the design and everything done, and so that will get underway here this spring and should be completed by this fall. Um, on the main stem, Missouri River, all of our levees that were eligible for rehab assistance have been returned to their full height and, are all, and all the breaches are closed, uh, with the except, exception of levy unit L536 in uh, northwest Missouri in Atchison County. Um, however, that levy, uh, it was planned to do a setback, so there was a lot of coordination with the project sponsor. So that, that levy is uh, 
on schedule and uh, on budget right now. Uh, we continue to uh, work on that one, and it should be completed this fall. Um, this spring, L536 will be closed, and it will have a uh, interim level of protection there. So on the remainder of the main stem levies that were eligible for rehab assistance, we're just finishing uh, finishing up some final grading, seeding, and some other uh, drainage structure work and that kind of thing, and we should have everything wrapped up by this fall. Pending questions, that's what I have, Eileen. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much, Matt. Uh, and as a reminder, our next call will be on Thursday, March 4th at 1 p.m. Um, this slide provides the spelling and job titles for our speakers from today. And we'll, did you want to make any final comments, Ben? Uh, yes, uh, thank you. I, I'd like to thank everyone for participating today, uh, particularly uh, Doug Cluck and Kevin Lau, uh, not just for their participation today, but for uh, all the support that they and their staffs and staffs and uh, uh, everyone else at NOAA give us on a nearly daily basis. I'd like to thank the districts for providing their updates, and uh, we look forward to uh, uh, talking to everybody next month. We will also be holding our uh, spring public meetings virtually again this year. They will be in April, and we will be developing uh, those days in the next uh, week or so and getting those out to, to the public. So with that, uh, I have nothing else. Thank you, Eileen. All right, thanks, John. Uh, we had a maximum of 99 callers today, so I appreciate everybody's participation, and we will look to hear from you again in March.